Hello, this is the fourth in my series of quick tips and features you could easily miss in Beaver Builder. Here I'm taking a look at Beaver Thema and specifically styling the post navigation module that comes with Beaver Thema. As I'm recording this, this is a relatively new addition to Beaver Thema. It came out in version 1.2, which was released at the end of August 2018. And we can take a look at it on this site because here I am using Beaver Thema to style my post singular pages. I'm here in the page builder already, so I just need to go over to my modules. And as I'm using Thema, I have my own group of Thema modules. These are context aware, so what's available here will depend on what you're trying to do. But I'm in a post singular, so I've got my post navigation. I'm gonna bring this into its own row. And this is what it looks like. It just adds some text for the title of the next post and the previous post. And here we have a HTML arrow. It looks identical to what you'll find in the Beaver Builder theme. So if you're a Beaver Builder theme user, you're probably familiar with this. If you go to customize a content post layout, you can decide to hide or show those next and previous posts here. But what I like about the Thema version, oh, there's a couple of things, but firstly is that you can pretty much add whatever you like to these individual fields. And I do like this, I'll cover this quickly. You can navigate within the same taxonomy or category if you like. I've needed this before, we did a golfing website and on certain posts, we were just showing information about the individual holes on that golf course. And we didn't want somebody, once they reached the last hole, to be able to go onto a regular blog post. So it was really handy in that circumstance. And this is going to be really helpful. Previously, it was before this, I needed to do that with a bit of code in my functions PHP file. So let's talk about this. So we can do what we like here. Interestingly enough, we can put whatever HTML that we like in it, but I did test this and it will accept a short code. So we could use our Thema connections if we wanted with this and connect it up with fields. I don't know if that's a good idea or where you might want to use that, but just be aware you could do it. Let me just show you how it easy it is to change here. So this percentage and title here is outputting the title and I could just change that if I wanted to the word next here and it will show me live what we could do of course with this is remove anything for the previous so we could just have people moving forward only or we could duplicate this and just put content in one of these and not the other and then do the same and reverse that so we could place those in different areas on the template itself let me go and show you what I've been playing with because I really wanted to keep some CSS and HTML available for me when I wanted to style this in the future. So I've gone a little bit over the top with this one, but I have saved a row. Let me go over and find that. Here it is. We'll place this here. So this is what I've done here. Um, so I, yeah, I've used the column to give it a bit of background. One interesting thing, if you don't want to do too much with this, you can use the column that you've placed it in to style the colors of the text that's been outputted because you can just change your link color and your hover color over here. So you can use that. And if you were using header, you could color that as I have done actually. I've added the white to add, to overwrite the, the color of my headers in the theme. Let me cancel that now and we'll take a look at the module itself. So what I've done here is I've wrapped everything in a span. This has been helpful to isolate just the text, the anchor text content that is in here. If we look at the top selector, it's covering the whole of this area to the previous button and vice versa. So to just isolate this, it's helpful to put a span tag within everything. And what I've done is also I've added a header for where, let's look at this one, the next one where I've added the word next. And then I've used font awesome to add in this little icon over here. Now I'm using the Beaver Builder theme and now we've had the option to use 
Font Awesome 4 or 5. This is using 5. I think mostly where there are similar icons, the only difference between the naming is this S here. So F-A-S, if I took away the S, it'd probably work as if it was 4 in this case because there's this angled double right is available in 4. But I'm using 5 here. And it was just a case of going over to their site. I love what they've done now because you can just click the HTML that you need and then just paste that into the module so that's what's added this and i've also closed off my header four here then i put my title in and it's fallen below naturally probably a better practice for me might have been just to have put in a break just to have forced it below um but i haven't done on this one because it's fallen maybe if i have some shorter titles that could cause me a problem so you might need to adjust that but I think that covers the HTML and what you can do there. There's lots of things, obviously lots of better styling you could probably dream of than I have. Let's take a look at the CSS that I've added to this. I've decided to add this to the actual page template itself. So I'm going to Control or Command and Y if you're on a Mac and we'll bring up the CSS that's applied to this template. The first thing that I did is to make it a little bit button like and to be in keeping with other beaver builder buttons i added a one pixel jump i can probably show you that if i go down here and just if you just watch this it's got a little bit of give to make it a little bit more button like so it's up to you whether you want to use that the next section here is pretty much all you need now i've styled the color separately here but if you were wanting the same colors you could add all of the style to just this post navigation nav links and a and my span tag i've added in my own custom class that i've added actually to the module itself so under advanced i've added that class there without the dot and we could really just style everything here so i've added the pad in here i've got the display inline block so that makes sure that when i go move responsively the text will still fall under each other but it won't create its own little block if you know what i mean i've changed the font size on this one and what we can do and what i've used here is to separate the colors out i've added the dot nav previous here to that one so i can independently color that and the same with the next one i've done that with the nav next to color this one black and it's just been a case of adding individually in this case the next and previous hover states on those but of course if you were just removing the previous and the next and just using this generic one of course you could use a copy of that with hover to style both of those um i think that's it there was one other tweak that i've added here i noticed that when we move to mobiles these will go automatically to stack under each other but they move to the left and i wanted to make sure that they were centered so this is just something that kicks in when we get to the default mobile breakpoint you almost might be different just to make sure that this content is there centered actually what i've done on this i've decided this is not needed so let me just come out of here when we go to mobile in this case i've gone to my advanced settings and i've set this just for large and medium so it's going to disappear on mobiles i think i've covered everything i wanted to say i've included here all of that css and i've included two versions of the html so i started with a, a much simpler one which looks exactly like this and of course you know you could do something like this if you wanted as well one other thing just to mention for the developers out there is that there is also a new filter that's been added for this post navigation filter not explored that i don't have really the coding skills but i would like to look at some point about how we could actually show the next featured image or the previous featured image as well and i'm sure this filter might be useful in that Okay, I think that's enough from me. Thanks very much for listening. If you did like this video, then please give me a thumbs up on YouTube and consider subscribing to the channel. Hope you have a great day and hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.